Now, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. And our conversation now continues with the stance of a former chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, from 2010 to 2015. Atahiru Jaga has described the Buhari administration as disappointing. He said governance has been very poor at the federal level and that many of the states and that it was time for a change. We'll now be taking a critical look at the administration of President Muhammadu Buhari with two public affairs analysts, uh, Mr. Dayo Lumuwagu and uh, uh, Mr. Salako. But we have Mr. Lumuwagu uh, standing by on the breakfast. Uh, good morning and thanks for joining us. Yeah, All right. Beginning, what do you think about Jaga's statement about the you know, this administration being disappointing and, you know, failing it to deliver on its promises to Nigerians. Do you agree with Jaga? I, I think uh, Professor Jaga is uh, the caliber person he is. He's, uh, he's somebody in the position to be uh, who you expect will be careful with this word, uh, who will not just ut make utterances without properly considering them. Uh, so if it's coming from him, this is not bare pallet talks. Uh, I think, um, in fairness, uh, maybe Jaga spoke the mind of so many Nigerians at this time. Personally, I think what Jaga's opinion is very correct of this administration. Uh, he says it's very disappointing, in fact, for me. Uh, if there's other adjectives that could be used, uh, maybe we should be thinking about that. It's, uh, maybe it's even more than very disappointing. Uh, so, to say the least, I think... Um, Jaga has possibly spoken the mind of so many Nigerians. And if you look at the different parameters, you definitely know that uh, this is not the Nigeria we expected on the Buhari administration. Mm. So, should, we now, should we now go like deep into the details and see what exactly about the presidency and the administration is disappointing? Mr. Lumuwagu, when you look at kidnapping in the country, when you look at banditry, when you look at uh, killings, when you look at you know, the Boko Haram insurgency, you consider the piracy in the Niger Delta, how would you assess the, the performance of the Buhari administration? You see, again, I think the good point, the, 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 the good point is, to, is to even assess Buhari based on what he says going to do for us as Nigeria. Uh, in 2014, he came in on the mattress of change, 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 change. And basically, he says it's going to turn around the economy, it's going to turn around security for this country, it's going to the anti corruption fight, it's going to take it, you know, to, to, to the highest height, to the highest level. And if you look at those three, and maybe in 2019 when he came, see about security, see about the economy, see about. It, 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 if you ask me, I think Buhari has called not below the average for me, I think it's called negative max, if possible. Now, because I go to security that you mentioned first. Uh, never in this country have we been terrorized like that. You see, if as a Nigerian you you step out in the morning, you are not you are not sure if you are coming back because anything could happen to you along the line. Whether it's kidnapping, whether it's banditing, whether it's Boko Haram, whether it's a spray bullet from you know from Nigerian policemen or army or something, you are not too sure whether you are coming back to to to, to your home again. And that is the state we are in. Now, you're talking about uh, in 2014, what do we have? We have Boko Haram. That's not like banditry. Now, today we have banditry, we have kidnapping like never before. Whether in the north, whether in the south, you know, in the south, south, this thing is prevalent. And uh, the sad thing is, you see, uh, it, is, it, is, it is peculiar to this country. Peculiar in the sense that uh, now, in other countries, what they do, I mean, if you see, this is happening. You name it, groups as terrorists go, and you go after them as terrorists. But in Nigeria, what do we have? It's only Nigerian government that is, I mean, Nigerian government just to recommend that there are terrorists in Nigeria. Whether it's Boko Haram, whether the, the bandits, they tell you they are insurgents. They tell you, they give you all kinds of names that, uh, you see, if you go to international palace, they are not even accepted. So if you look at security, if you look at whether it's the rate of people, who are kidnapping people, banditing. You know, the other day we were, I mean, just yesterday or people yesterday, uh, we see what is happening in your state, you know, your state and all that. And, and you see, there's times that we, the, the way this government responds. Now, you hear people killing people in their own land, many people raping women and all that, and you do nothing. And uh, even in the in the north, so matter what we do, they, 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 you know, they harass the evil that they want to send people back into that, to wherever they come from. And nobody issues, nobody mentioned, nobody talk about it. It just died like that. 
But the moment is happening to your neighbors in the southwest. You know, this government is quick to, to, to quickly come out and say, you know, it's, you know. So it, 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 this Buhari administration is uh, is very disappointing, more than very disappointing, uh, because like never before, they have polarized Nigeria, they have right. divided Nigerians, and then we are we are we are up against ourselves. All right, Mr. Mr. Lomuago, um, I'm going to step in here. Um, you know, you've spoken on security and your assessment of um, the government's um, um, work with regard to security. You've also spoken on the campaign promises, which of course include security, the fight against corruption, and others. Um, but would you say that there might be other angles that the government has at least made some effort and has been successful? Um, in infrastructural development, for example, there have been road projects that have been going on for a while. The second Niger Bridge has also, um, you know, been um, started basically and is currently ongoing. Um, the railway project that the government also has started, you know, and put into uh, works. Some of them have already kicked off. Uh, would you say that the government may not be getting it right with regard to security and the fight against corruption, but? has done well enough in other aspects and you know maybe they shouldn't be given a a um, below you know um or, or rather a low pass mark um a low rating basically <laughs> um, by some of these persons uh i understand this right you see the, the, the truth is uh, yeah maybe a little drop of here and there of what they bring that seems to to make sense but okay as i analyze it you talk about infrastructure for example now, so who is going to use the road if the bandits are on the road to kidnap me, to kill me? What is the essence of the road you're building? Now you talk about rate network, who is going to use it? Even your, even your, even your rate network these days, you know, even when you are traveling in the in, you know, in the in, in, in the in the train this day, you are not sure if bandits will not block you on the on, on the rail and they block the rail and, uh, and kidnap people. Uh, uh, so my point is, uh, yes, maybe a little drop here and there, and uh, that you want to preach them. But by every single step made forward, it looks like we're making a thousand steps back on the game. And for me, that is not progress. And so there's no way you want to give a pass back to this government. And uh, you talk about even for the infrastructure they are doing. Now you look at, you know, is this totally in the interest of Nigeria? Now, the infrastructure at what cost? What, what are we doing and at what cost? Uh, and uh, in this period where we have very big forces. In this period where the, the government is not generating so much money that we are going from hand to mouth, we are borrowing all over the place from China, from everywhere, from any country available to give us money. We are even borrowing from, from, from dormant accounts, from everything. Everything you can see aside, you are borrowing. Now, you want to look at those, those things you say you are able to do that was supposed to give you pass money for uh, the, the project at what cost. And then things like, uh, for example, the radar is going from Nigeria to the day, uh, for whose benefit? Are we are Nigeria and also Nigeria? Is it, so these are some of the points, these are some of the things you need to talk about. Uh, you definitely, I mean, you, yes, there will be here a little here and there that they are doing that seems to be making progress. But again, when you see them and you look at the cost implication of what the government that's prided itself as and to corrupt, I mean, that, that, that they will do the corruption fight, and, uh, and you're looking at this, and this is the same procedure of this anti corruption that we're talking about. Uh, is this government again the same government that we? That we tell you they are feeding students, they are feeding pupils who are inside their, who are totally coronavirus, uh, you know, the situation of happening in Nigeria. And you're looking at it, does this make sense to even the common man of this country? Okay. Even the name and that question. Does All right. Mr. So for every little progress, it seems that we take a thousand miles back. Can we now look at the aspect of, you know, the economy? The president, you know, came in and said that he was going to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty. He's also spoken about education, and we saw the Minister of Education you know, saying just last week that they've lifted, uh, they've basically reduced the number of out-of-school children from 10 million to about 6 million. So wouldn't you agree that maybe the government is doing what it can in the, in the area of uh, you know, education and, and even the economy, or, or do you differ? Again, I, I beg to differ on the economy. And uh, my position is, it, can't, it has not been this world. Yes, we know you had issues in 2014 when you came in. Uh, we know they accumulated, accumulated, and accumulated or whatever when you came in in 2014. But honestly, yes, I think uh, Nigeria could be better than this. 
I think there are so many brilliant minds all over Nigeria and outside this country that can help us if we really need help. Uh, but to think that the economy has become what it is today. I mean, check all your indices, whether it's the unemployment rate, uh, you know, the, 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 today you use uh, almost 80 percent of your of your revenue to to service debt, and we still we still melting up the debt. We still we keep borrowing every day, and so if you ask me, you know, clearly uh, uh, the, this government cannot say they have done anything. Uh, and when you say you are going to lift up 100 million out of poverty, what what what, 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 what exactly is that? Five five thousand euro will lift people out of poverty. You give them five five thousand in this six month, and that's how to lift people out of poverty. Or 30 times, I mean, the people that college or empower, where are they today? Has they been lifted out of poverty? Uh, and uh, you see, again, when we are in the critical moment, you know, where you should be looking at how to, what is exactly is in the interest of Nigeria? We are talking about corona, you know, virus all over the place, and uh, we're still thinking about how we get vaccine and all that. And who you want to spend over several thousand, something billionaire that we don't even have to be dashing people five five thousand. And you say they are the poor. Who are the poor? Where is the database? How do you generate that database? Again, a lot of things are treated in secrecy in front of this administration. And, and so you see, the economy really is uh, is clear. Forget the indices, forget all the things you see. Just go out and see people. Just go out and see how hungry people have become. All Just right. look at the statistics. How many people have lost their job in the last one, two years? All right, Mr. Lomo, I'm gone. Yes, we are not there. Um, um, a final question from me before we go, and I'm going to see if we can squeeze in two with the time that we have. So please very briefly address it to both of them. The first one would be if you say that uh, from your analysis, the government um, has failed and you agree with uh, Professor Atahiru Jega, uh, would you say that the government was underprepared or overwhelmed when they got into power? The second question would be, this government was, in 2019, re-elected. So it, that must show that the Nigerian people um, approved of the, you know, the, um, the way the country had been run in the first four years. Um, and so what changed? You know, and how, how did you know, it suddenly become different? I, I don't think this government was overwhelmed with what it saw on ground. Uh, because it's not that it was suddenly imported into Nigeria after 2014. I mean, we have been all we were, we were all here all along, and so it's not. It's I think for me, and and I, and I, I start to be corrected. I think it's a deliberate thing they did in 2014 to control Nigeria and deceive us with all kinds of promises that they knew they would never live up to. And, and so to say that they are overwhelmed, no, they are not overwhelmed. It's 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 a, it's a, it's a game plan. And um, the, 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 the 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 second point you you raised is. Um, uh, but the elections, the 2019 elections, where, of course, the government yeah, so, was once so again. The election is 2019. Again, you know, you, all of us, we know that in Nigeria, uh, yes, it's, it's just because we don't have a better way of, elect, of, of selecting, making our representation law. Uh, clearly, in Nigeria, the election is not there. And we know what happened in 2019. When we're talking about electoral reform, what are we doing about it? These people, they know. So they knew that whether you are there or not, they will still make happen what they want to make happen. We saw how, you know, people are, I mean, people that you have, in, in proven rights, yeah, I mean, with poverty and all that, if you give them 5,000, give them 2,000, give them 3,000, they vote for you and all that. And so we are still far from there. So for me, in Nigeria, currently, the election is not the best representation of what the people want because our electoral system is so faulty and everybody is crying for it, but nobody is doing anything about it. And 2023 is almost here. They know their game plan. But clearly, Nigeria, as, as it is, is not sustainable. And it will be in the best interest of all Nigerians and this government to do what is right and move this country forward before eventually it comes to the first. Do you think that the government has time to fix? Um, because according to Atairu Jaga, it says that you know, there might still be a little time to change uh, the narrative and to, of course, fix you know, the current administration's um, uh, performance. Do you think that there is that time between now and 2023? I think we still have about two or, two or three years, to, I mean, a little less three years to go. Now, Nigerians are very forgiving people. Nigerians are very uh, rational people. I mean, they're they reasonable people. If you show them a little thing that you are making good progress, Nigeria will be you behind you. But this the government, the way it face, uh, I hope anything changes for, for good or for, for better. But clearly, this is not sustainable. Something got to be done. Right. And uh, people calling for change, and Tyrone Jagger and the other people, I think they, 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 they're in the best interest of this country at this point. 
And we do agree, indeed, that something needs to be done. So thank you very much uh, for your time and thoughts on The Breakfast this morning, analyzing the administration of current President Muhammadu Buhari and saying, has it actually been disappointing, as Jega says, or is he living up to expectation of Nigerians? But one thing we can all agree on is that that change that he promised us is what we actually deserve and fast. Thanks again for being on the program. Thank you. All right. Um, well, we, of course, uh, still have a little bit to share with you this morning on The Breakfast. Mm -hmm. it's, been, it's, been a pretty, it's been a pretty intense Monday <laughs> from Mark Adebayo, Libros Showman, of course, uh, Dario Lumuago. We unfortunately couldn't be joined by Fashola and yes. uh, Salako. Um, but we still have a, a little bit to share with you. Uh, we now will be talking COVID-19. One of the former uh, ministers of the current administration, uh, Abdullahi Ibrahim, uh, died um, of COVID-19. And so we're going to be talking about that next and seeing um, what we currently are dealing with with regards to the pandemic, how Nigeria is handling it, and, and what other little details here and there might, we might be missing out on. It comes up next here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa.